So, the systemic approach. Uh, today, many people are already quite familiar with what is systemic. So, it's a, uh, in the coaching area, we say it's a container. It's a lot, schools and perspectives are in that. Sometimes, uh, when I say I'm working systemically, TA people say, oh yeah, I'm working with families too. And uh, systemic, for me, is not family, working with multi-personal situations. It can be. This is a question of setting. Systemic, for me, is uh, are different things. It's most, these are mostly perspectives. And so systemic is not something in addition to TA, TA and systemic, but systemic is a meta position from which you can do TA and many other things. So it's nothing you can add horizontally. Mm. And uh, I refer to uh, the systemic sociology in Germany, it's Niklas Luhmann, I, I don't know whether you know him, or the systemic human bio biologist Umberto Maturano and Francisco Varela mm -hmm. and others. But I will not talk about their ideas and theories. I talk about what we took from that and how we shape that as professional perspectives. And uh, the system, today, systemic is a, a high-rated term, so everything is now called systemic in order to hope that it's, the value will go up. That's, that's okay. Um, for me, there are seven points, seven perspectives that, that are included in the systemic view. And they are additional. It's not a, a system, it's a catalog, uh, scientifically speaking. So uh, to, they are different, um, was that Scheinwerfer? Lights? Different spotlights. Mm -hmm. And this, they are not very systematically uh, related to each other. And one is the idea of mobile. Mobile? And uh, this is one of the early ideas in systemic we started from, we thought if you understand how things interact, then you, with little effort, if you find the right point, you can help the system to, to create big moves. And if you put the same effort on the wrong point, then the system just balances it and stays the way it was. So, the mobile ideas, I study how things interrelate and think about at which point I have an influence. Or my client, when I do supervision, has an influence. Has a client's role to use a point of influence. Sometimes they have a nice idea about the point of influence, but they have no access to this point of influence. Then they need to look at parts of the mobile they have access to the crucial points to trigger them and then watch what happens. So it's much more experimental than analytic. You try something and then you watch how the system reacts and find out uh, the, the nature of the patterns of the system and you learn from that for the next point in mobile. So it, it was uh, in the 70s new because before in psychotherapy we looked at the one person and the history of that person. And father and mother was okay, brothers and system have not been much included in their psychotherapeutic thinking. And all the other uh, parts of systems around the organizational systems, the professional systems, have not been very relevant. And now we have much more ideas what should be part of a mobile when I look at it. Um, this, uh, 
this gives you the necessity to decide from which point you want to look at the system to decide which part of the mobile is interesting for you because you cannot look at all the parts of the mobile. So it, it is an interactive process to decide what is my mobile right now. Secondly, system approach for me are attitudes. This means that we are resource oriented. How is behavior, how are attitudes resources or can be turned into resources? Not what is wrong with it. Even if it seems to be wrong, how is wrong a premature way of being right? Yeah. 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 How is wrong? Something's coming here wrong. Mm -hmm. How is this a premature uh, uh, way of the same quality being right? Yeah. Not saying something is wrong, we have to put it away or make it sober, mm -hmm. but that's a rough material, and how can we make really a resource for this person and the world from that? Sure. Uh, resource oriented and meanwhile everybody knows this, that you do not look how, how did the problem develop in histories but what do we need to solve a problem and we focus on those things that are helpful to solve the problem and if they are not helpful right now we skip them and certainly this has also to do with this is in in, in what has uh, mm. uh, this has to do with uh, the role and the profession you have what the way you you can address solutions so you cannot define solutions without thinking about your role and your profession and so you play in this game but in the first place not problem oriented and not resolving problems in order to be free, but to find good ways to be free that make the problematic versions unnecessary. That's a turning around of perspective. And uh, to me it's important, uh, each living system is a learning system. So to think about how can systems learn, what did didactic do we offer systems and do systems adopt what professional culture within they want to solve problems. And so when, uh, at our institute we have many uh, exercises that are systemic. For example, we are working in, in, in subgroups for people. One says, uh, has a question, uh, a controlling problem, and the three others are potential consultants. Each of them uh, has two questions and then has to give an offer to the one who brings in the problem, let's say A, and A listens to what is offered to him and how the questions are stated and intuitively decides which consultants to choose. Then the other two should change perspectives and roles from now on. They are not competing consultants, but super, super, supervisors for B, who got uh, the job. And this change of perspective and roles and reorganization of intuition and which kind of concepts and knowledge and attitudes to adopt, adopt for this position this is not a content concept, that's a didactic concept to learn systemic approaches, systemic perspectives. Then B and A, as you know from your training as well, B and A do a piece of, a piece of work. C and D give feedback to B and A, depends on the contracts they have with B. Uh, then this part is finished, then we go on the next level. Uh, A has to think about whether he ch has chosen the right consultant. And they think about uh, whether the consultant was uh, helpful or uh, just similar. 
and why he refused other consultants and what the consultants did to offer them adequately or not adequately. So we learn on different layers and exchange all our expre uh, impressions and experience around that. So a learning experience is on the process level much more intensive as we had in our early exercises. And it's maybe not so in important that somebody understands the content so much. It's important that to change roles and perspective is something very important systemically to learn in order to that you are, are flexible and free to work on a vertical level, to choose the horizontal level in which you will work. And this has also certainly to do with, uh, with uh, learning culture and organizations. That because the didactic of learning in professional training and the didactic in cooperation in creative projects in organization is the same. You can use a lot of these uh, settings to work together. And 95% of learning ha doesn't happen in seminars. It happens in real life. Uh, part of the systemic approach is the rea reality is the reality of the observer. It's my frame of reference that makes out of an event a picture of an event. So you almost never can say how was the situation without asking for whom with what history, what interest, what entanglement the situation was described like that. And you know that from quantum physics uh, it's not possible to define reality uh, without defining the ways you try to approach reality because your way to approach produces reality. You mm -hmm. cannot really differentiate between objective reality and the way you observe it. And so that's, uh, meanwhile, most people know this in principle, but to take this serious when you are in a engaged situation, that's a long learning process. To say, okay, this is one reality, it could be like this, but it could be different. For example, we have a, a very interesting exercise, it's from the time we did family therapy. We told uh, two family therapists uh, that we will present them a plate family, played with the rest of the participants. They should go outside until we have arranged everything, how the family is, the pathology, the character of the family, and so on. And they went out believing that we will do that. But we did nothing. <laughs> we, did, we did not even define family roles. And the first one came in. And it's so interesting how by this kind of asking people, the family creates itself. With its roles, its history, its pathology, its characteristics. And after 10 minutes, and, and this family therapist is glad that he finds out, not being aware that he invents together with others. Mm -hmm. And after 10 minutes we change, and the other person invents a different family. Even roles change. Certainly not in real life, because the roles are much more stable, but in such a play family, even the roles within the family changed totally and they invent a different story because another person is observing them as a family and creating what the person thinks he or she found out. Certainly that's a, a playful exercise, but it's striking when you... Because you it, it, within 10 minutes it's getting so plausible that you cannot believe that it's invented in the last 10 minutes. Mm -hmm including psychosomatic reactions. So, reality is the reality of the observer and 
This has a, a lot more question. Observer is, is just uh, something neutral, but within companies. The question is, who observes with what kind of perspectives, out of which role? We will later have a, a, a controlling triangle as it helps us to think about how we bring all these points together that is matching. That I do not observe uh, with the perspective of a psychotherapist when I'm contracted as a communication mod uh, moderator. I have to change the perspectives and the world and, and the, the schema, schemata to um, observe are different and they have to something to do with your job and your role. And to take this serious is an important part of professionality. Point five. Uh, personality and encounter are always to be seen in a context. And in classical TA we have learned to see personality in the context of private history and to see an encounter in the context of two private psyches with their uh, private histories. But, and this might be appropriate when, when it's a job and this is what people want. But if you look at personality uh, in a role, in a company, you need different contexts. You need to understand how long is this person in this company, how much did the person adopt and integrates uh, typical style elements of the company or not. Uh, so there are um, contexts in the background that we have to refer to when we work on the foreground uh, that are that there are thousands of possible contexts and we have to think which contexts might be uh, relevant for this, for this encounter. Yeah. And then decide separately how, how do I relate to them in the background or how do make, I do make a, a, a bring them in the foreground and talk about. So, um, Graham Barnes, your UK colleague, he once said TA has no future because it's deleting context and content. And we have to integrate content and context into our concepts. And the classical content, context, uh, concepts are not uh, useful for that. Yeah. When TA should have a future besides that narrow classical professional path, it needs to develop the series and the approaches that integrate context and content. For example, I gave a speech in Passau two weeks ago. Uh, we are, uh, it might be a wonderful okay, okay situation between two people who are in a colonialistic system and they have a symbiotic <coughs> exploit exploiting relationship not between each other but together with people not present. Is that okay? We, we, need, we need a way to, to bring these context variables into the situation and not, not only try to orient ourselves at the, at the encounter quality in between private individuals. That's not enough for a, a school who wants to contribute to the problems of our times. Um, so, classical psychological oriented psychotherapy is usually uh, including, uh, uh, focused on motivations and biography. And sometimes this is wonderful, but in general, uh, it's much more important to be focused on meaning, what does this mean, what we observe, and what consequences to future, to the creation of future realities does this have what we have. <coughs> and meaning, 
from that perspective is not only feeling good for the individual, it's also a question of does this help evolution of our society. It's all, it's, uh, I, I'm very often uh, misunderstood as if I would say classical concepts are wrong. They are not wrong, but they have an embedded logic, embedded understanding of psychotherapy, embedded understanding from uh, meaning and importance <coughs> that is good for specific issues, but it's very small compared with all the possible uh, issues we could address. Uh, so, yes? Can I also ask to a second, um, do you make anything of Burns' edition of the third life position in, in, in his last book? Because he talked about, I'm okay, you're, or, you're okay, and then what do you say after you say hello? He added the third life position, which is they are okay, which to me sort of indicates something of yeah, it's, the social... It's, you, it's opening a, a window. <coughs> Yeah. But it's not going into the world there over there. We should yeah. move through that window. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I just wondered if you had a view yes. of yeah. whether, he, whether that was particularly significant. Yeah. And maybe, maybe significant that he was writing that at his, the end of his life. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opener, mm. and we, we should use it. Yeah. And where would he have gone? And I do think it's interesting that Byrne is very specific in the organization's book and to some extent in the group's book that he doesn't want to use the terminology of psychotherapy. He yeah. wants a different terminology. Yeah. And he's very clear about that and says something about yeah. that. This is different. It's a system. Right. Right. It's an organization. It's not a person. But it go, this, um, this got lost. Yes. We have decades of dominating, un uh, underlining, dominating the frame of reference of a specific kind of psychotherapy for all human questions. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, when we talk about the classical tradition, I agree, but there's also the radical psychiatry tradition, which I think is much yes. more sensitive yes. to yes. that, and I also think it's interesting that that's got lost. So yeah. having our history, the whole tradition, or yeah. it wasn't delivered at school, but a tradition that really did open up that, yeah, right. mm, that social the, aspect. This has to do with horizontal thinking in TA. It was used yeah. as, a, as a department of TA, yeah. Yeah. not yeah. As, a, as a meta perspective yeah. for everything. Yeah. 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 Oh, the, I, I appreciate TA very much. I will have a, a whole chapter on, I guess, about 18 crucial points of TA I want to keep. And then I have about 12 that should be... No, not... not I, do not talk about so so should be skipped, I say. So should be added <laughs> that we are fit for the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. So models uh, are not answers. Burn use it. But it got lost somehow. They org uh, they organize questioning yes. and assuming. And after you have an assumption you should look very closely whether this assumption is plausible. Sometimes in the situation we make it plausible, but then we have to get out of the situation and think about, and if we are happy with that, is that helpful for society? For whom is it helpful? Is it he helpful for the organization? Is it helpful for people who are uh, uh, who will uh, be touched by the consequences but are not in our horizon. So we have to relate to many more horizons and decide to which one we will be oriented in this piece of work. We cannot do everything at any time, certainly, but we are responsible for our choices and cannot just choose habitually because we know uh, that's the error we know well. And I personally believe that's a question in games. From that day that I stopped to refer to games, almost no games have been played in my groups. So on a meta level, uh, we do a lot to bring the tendency to play games into the foreground because we have a culture that we know how to deal with that. 
And if we learn to deal with other things that are in the background then, then they come in the foreground and they are interesting and the tendency to play games goes into the background without treating them. And I'm a fan of creating positive cultures and not treating problematic cultures. Mm -hmm. If the soul gets a new reality offer that fits really, the soul, I believe, in most of the cases, lo loses interest mm -hmm. in neurosis. And that's the only solution we can have in our society, because we cannot treat all that. It's not possible. So, these are the systemic approaches. And that's a, a sentence I like. Most important things are not hidden. To be able to see them, absorb, I have to change perspectives. Yeah. It reminds me of those pictures where you have to stare at them for ages. Uh, still, what are they called? Oh, yeah, yeah. After a while, they yeah, turn into a 3D like yeah. picture. Yeah. And we have learned traditionally that ex exploration means to look closer. Yeah. And if on closer may mean let's look in detail, and tr TA, transactional analysts, are trained very well to look at details, and, and it's good to do that. And if you do not understand what happens through what you uh, observe right now, you go into a, a, a specific path into history to understand what you observe. And this is one way to do it, but the other way to do it is to step back and try very different perspectives, as I did in this uh, conversation, instead of thinking about what might have been undetected in um, Hazel's history and work on that, how might the feelings today be the reflections of projections into the future for, for which she doesn't have a balanced attitude already, but she will find. And that's a change. Uh, and Psychotherapists or all professionals should know how to introduce different perspectives. And this has to do with our <coughs> idea of contract. If you think a contract is to go along with the way the client is stating his problem, then you are limited to perspectives. And, if, and I feel free if this perspective, even if we could work somehow, on that perspective, but doesn't seem to me the major perspective. And I have idea of which perspectives we can try to come to different and much more fruitful horizons than I actively offer them. Mm. And this is normally not in the in the range of classical TA. So, in the, in the way to think about objects, it's very important that I do not think in attributes of what I see, but in perspectives on how I look at it. So, this is an observer perspective, taken seriously. And then I can say, okay, also in this light, when I look at this, it's plausible that there is a drama, and I know psychotherapeutic procedures to work with trauma. But then I, want, I know that there's a perspective to look at this problem as a drama. I can also look at this problem maybe as a result of salary policy in an organization. And if I change to this kind of perspective, how does the same problem look then? And what kind of concepts can I adopt then, and what kind of procedures? And does it make sense to try this perspective? Or I can say, the, the, uh, the same problem might be uh, the consequence of somebody being on a wrong professional track. And he's trying hard and harder, and I can certainly find out how this driver developed in his history, 
but I can also think about does this person have an idea how to change direction in professional development and if we would be successful somehow in that is this dry heart still there? Is the danger of burnout then still there? And so we actively create perspectives and this is for what we need field competence. We must know society. Mm -hmm. uh, we can only work in a field we somehow know or at least recognize if we don't know and not just do what we know, either it's relevant or not. It, it might be plausible, it's not wrong, but it's not relevant, maybe. So it's necessary that we are aware that our perspectives define reality, our explanation of realities and our ideas, what to do about reality, how to create realities. And this is a metaphor, the, the spotlights. Yeah. And this has to do with the, with the concept policy in TA. So we have a concept policy that each spotlight should be separate from the other, independent. So we can look at it as a, from the communication perspective. This does not include a personality theory. It's separate. So, for example, I use a functional model and it should not automatically be related to a structural model and a structural model to history, private history of a person. In the TA theory is constructed, uh, there are many things entangled in each other. When you want to work with a functional model and you have a good reasons for it to do so, you must to go into childhood development questions. What is usually not necessary to work with a good functional model when you want to f uh, find out what meaning can be created with this functional model and to what consequences could that lead. You do not need a personality <coughs> model at this point and you do not need a, a personal history at that point. So we have, it's important that we are aware of habitually trained connections between perspectives. And this is one of the problems. If you are too long in training, you le learn a lot of habits. And because you learn to create this reality well, uh, it's easier to invite others into this reality instead of giving up your reality and find uh, and invent new realities with your client. So this has a lot to do with professional training policy. And it's important that people do not are not invited in modern habits, but also if they adopt an, a habit at the same time knowing it's a habit and knowing how to change it if it doesn't fit. So this is means being beware of perspectives, and I already said it, it's a metaphor of the spotlights, and then instead of saying, what do you see if these spotlights are on, and what can we do then, we ask which spotlights are actually turned on, in which light do they show the object, which ones are unnecessary or distracting. Which other additional ones would show the object in a useful, but maybe, maybe surprising light? So it's a helicopter style of consulting, I say. The logo of my institute are three strands. Mm -hmm. So the one is flying, the other one is observing, the one flying, mm -hmm. and the third one is observing how and why and in what ways the second one is observing the first one. And professional competence is on all three SWAN levels. This should always all three be active. And a culture should be created that we ask each other and not just watching flying and the mood are flies this way as well. Yes, then it's, <laughs> it's okay. So I start only uh, to give you a sense of uh, how much I appreciate classical TA uh, in order not to be misunderstood that I I don't like it. 
it has a, I, I'm a, a honorary member of the German Systemic Society. I'm president of coaching uh, association, all this. And still all the years I named myself to be a transactional analyst because there's so much well, well your stuff in TA uh, that I want it to be developed further. I'm not sure whether it's possible. Maybe the organizations are too uh, too too star, too str too 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 frozen. It's too difficult. It's complicated to develop organizations like this. But it's not. It's not a shame when an organization dies because people survive and can form new organizations. So, uh, I, when I was younger, I hoped always to uh, to transform organizations, but it's a hard job. <laughs> it's, and evolution might be more to let organizations die and put what is lively in it into new organizations. And again, Byrne gave us a little bit of a curse there, because Byrne said, an organization's priority is to survive. Uh, it's, it's maybe from, from the inner side, it's true. Yes. Each living organism wants to survive, but looking from outside for an organization, I just do not see a necessity. I don't know how Byrne meant it. No. That's part of our problem, isn't it? We don't yeah. really know what that meant a lot of the time. So what what I what I always what I always liked in TA and and this is what we continue on several levels is focusing focusing on real people and real life situations. It's, it must always to be in translated in real life events. And what is included in a theory, from my point, how I read this, is that reality is created by transaction. The, the ways people create reality, with, with, which has hard consequences, is produced by a soft process of communication. This is why we as specialists for creating Reality, through communication, have an important job to do uh, in this society. And how we create reality has to do with frame of references, being aware of roles, being aware of contexts, and so on. And one basic idea of Bern, which is in the TA, uh, regulations is well valuable as well is saying before you try to give the message you have to invent a shared frame of reference in which the chance is that you reach the person and and you reach the person in in a way for example in the right role in an organization not to reach the person privately but to reach the person as a boss if you want to have authorization for a specific job and not know just be charming and he says, okay, my dear, because it's you. So, to be aware that you cannot start communication uh, on what you want to reach, you sh first should have a phase of think finding out whether the frame of reference and the positions of all people involved is in a way that the chance if you start um, it, it's coming together in, a, in an appropriate way. And for example, I've criticized my colleague Bert Hellinger. Is, is he known uh, here in, in UK? Yeah, I know him since many, many years. And he's, he has done um, his family constellations uh, with parts of big companies. And he certainly did something touching with them. And maybe even they changed the way they dealt with each other and so on. But, I said, Bert, 
at the same time you give a model how to deal with problems in companies. Do you think they should do the same thing with, 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 uh, within their hierarchy? You teach them a culture while you are working from the perspective of a culture. You always represent the culture and you have to be responsible whether your culture is useful for those who are touched by it. Because children may learn what you tell them, but be sure they learn how you behave while you teach, while you tell them. And this is true for, for each professional work. And if it isn't very clear, or one of the consequences is that you should work within organizations with perspectives and with tools and methods and concepts that fit to the culture of the organization to be spread there. Mm -hmm. There should not be a break, even if the actual work can be done fine with that. So we have as a embedded into a cultural strategy, context-oriented cultural strategy. So this is one of five or six charts. Charts what I want to keep from GA, but it will be continued later. I think it would be too much in general right now. I thought. At this point, it's good to switch to practical communication models to have something more handcraft type. Questions to the systemic? Uh, does it come over? How I understand systemic approach yes. mm -hmm. and how how complex that is. Mm. Yeah? This, this is a, uh, this has a lot to do with the overall theory of professionalism in organizations and in the organizational field, but in other fields as well. And uh, if you see, for example, how psychotherapists who run, are running big clinics, when they tried with their mentality of psychotherapy to deal with their management problems, they usually get in heavy troubles. <laughs> yeah? And they need a lot of time to understand that what is working in psychotherapy cannot be transferred in leading a company. It's a different professional with different perspectives, with different ethical rules, and so on. You work a lot in that field, eh? Sorry? You, you work a lot in that field, in the clinical field. No, 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 I'm an organizational practitioner, but I know a lot of um, psychotherapists who work in organizations, oh. and sometimes I'm appointed after to deal with the consequences. Mm -hmm. so. I was struck by your last comment yes. when you decided to, to finish this bit. And I think it's still sinking in a little. I'm still cogitating on it. But the comment around, um, as a practitioner, being really conscious of what you're introducing into an organisation, yeah to ensure that it is able to, to meet with the organization's culture and systems and processes. In, prin and in principle, yeah. if, if it works, then it's adequate for the organizational field. And yet there's also this other um, concept that, that I like that you've introduced around having new perspectives. Yes. And so maybe there is a new perspective that a practitioner could be brought in or could bring in that will give them a different view on things, but there still needs to be that checking around yeah. whether it can be sustained and whether it can be yeah. introduced. If it's done consciously and not habitually because you think that's, that's how you, you define and resolve problems, then it's mm -hmm. okay. We do not have the final answers, what is appropriate for organizations. It, it felt significant. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a very it's a systemic approach. Doesn't say this or that is right, and still it's an ethical um, challenge to define yourself and be responsible for the reality you create and co-create. Yeah. For me, Esther, that's um, I see often that when TA is done in yeah. organisations, it doesn't fit 
doesn't fit the culture or the way of working mm -hmm. that people have. And it becomes this thing that then you get reactions to. Yeah. And that's not helpful. Yeah. So using whatever their way of thinking is mm -hmm. and yeah. helping them clarify yeah. that thing. Yeah. Maybe much it will depend. Yeah. And we have one problem, not only in TA, but also in TA, that we we teach people our concepts and leave it to them what to do with that. Yeah. Also, we are on our own do not know how to run a company with TA concepts. I don't believe that anybody knows, because you cannot run a company with TA concepts. Mm -hmm. So we, ha the modern uh, attitudes to services is that somehow I... I'm responsible to think about what uh, the customer can do with the concepts. And that, not teach him and hope he will find solutions, but think about how could solutions look like and help to solve problems and not teach tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think this is a, a real challenge to a traditional model of consultancy where people think that you have to sell something mm -hmm. and you sell a product and the client buys it so then in order to be different or better or competitive you have to then know what your product is compared to everybody else's so lean mm -hmm. management would be a really good example of that where it's been rolled out wholesale mm -hmm. right across the NHS regardless of context and applicability and it's a sort of lump that people are left with. Mm. And yet that consultancy has made a, a, a fortune on the back of it. So I think there's a real um, disjunction now in, in what it means to sell and market things. And that there's an idea that, that you were talking about relationship and mm. goals. And I'm wondering if that's... Right. But and I believe that many companies are not satisfied with this kind of de deliverance. Uh, they re uh, the, the better trained companies, and we train uh, three-fourths of our group members are internals in companies. And they are quite well trained, and they, uh, buy, they want to buy high qualified services, not mm -hmm. just some kind of, mo uh, of fashions or concepts. And so we have to develop, to deliver and have a, uh, and and develop a different understanding of for what do we get our money? Mm. And it's how to articulate that. So work, having worked within organisations, yeah. and set up a system. We actually did it, what we called a beauty parade. Yes. Uh, where we got lots of practitioners in to, to show us their wares and their services. We wanted to see these products. Mm. We wanted to see what they were. We wanted demonstrations of this. Yeah. But we didn't necessarily want it for ourselves. We wanted to know they had them and that they could just use them and it wasn't going to cost us any more to design anything. Yeah. But we, we, we wanted something that was unique yeah. for us. But isn't there also a myth that all organisations, in one way or another, produce products, whether it's a yes. service product or an actual product, and they have bought that myth rather than going to a meta level. So they believe yeah. that what they need is a product. Yes. So they get in MBTI, oh, that didn't work. Let's get in something else. Yeah. Let's get in something else. Oh, here's a TA person. Mm. <laughs> oh, they'll do a TA 101. Great, people have a certificate. Let's get them to do a TA 101 in yeah. our organisation. I will kill the next person I see who does a TA 101 <laughs> in an organisation. Yeah. It's so not fit for purpose. Yeah. Um, but there is a myth that organisations mm. have mm. often swallowed that we need just yeah. a different product. And we have to overcome this mentality. It's a mm. classical in, in other fields as well. In the coaching field, for example, uh, um, many of my colleagues, they think, okay, we have now a new label, coaching, the best is systemic coaching, and then sell it. And it's a mixture of all kinds of schools, one do NLP and call it coaching, the other do TA and call it coaching, the relabeling going around. And uh, they have had some troubles to change to a new perspective that really we should help to uh, companies to develop solutions that fit to their purpose and their cultures and not to sell them our ready-made product. And every year, so seven times already, 
I do a small conference uh, and companies are our hosts and they, they pay for the surrounding and then we choose one, two or three representatives of companies to a topic, for example, remote leadership or remote leadership, uh, leadership in when people are not mm. direct yeah. together, spread all over the world remote leadership mm -hmm. or um, generation uh, ex exchange mm -hmm. diversity was, was our la last topic how, topic. how do you uh, deal with diversity in your company and then the next question and what can people who offer services like we really help you and the presenters are only the representatives of the companies and not the consultants who want to sell their products. And, uh, and big companies and uh, high qualified representatives lo love to come because the consultants listen to us and they really do not want to sell us the one or other school or method of, they w really think about how to develop procedures to solve our problems. Mm and help us to exchange the knowledge we have within. And I guess that's the future. But it's it's not so comfortable because it's not so easy to define who you are. You cannot write it on a button. Mm. I think that's what's missing from a lot of consultancy is that um, a lot of consultants wouldn't know what their frame of reference was around organizations or people or systems. And to me, unless you know that, um, I, you don't know what it, it what it is you're doing in that initial encounter. Right. So I think that that's the opportunity for us is to to disseminate the importance of of clarifying what we think the role of a consultant is, what our frame of reference is, what it means to be systemic, what it means to be co-creative, or whatever, mm -hmm. and then what that means for how we practice. Yeah. So we kind of work leading from within, if you want. I have an example, like different perspective from uh, uh, my organization, which is also in uh, uh, services. So it's a uh, uh, creative agency. And uh, I was uh, uh, thinking through what is our uh, offer, what is our service. Mm. and what is the uh, um, reason for being yes. mm. and the uh, uh, reason for being after you know going uh, in deep dive is actually to make um, leading companies even more successful mm -hmm. so whatever uh, and whatever it takes in order for them to be more successful mm -hmm. it's our skill to uh, that we are selling to other companies that we will adjust to their mm -hmm. uh, frame mm. of this, reference this to the their system to mm. their needs to, to uh, transfer success stories yes so that is uh, um, actually way going for only way going forward because without that there is no uh, need for existence of mm. the creative yeah. agencies and I guess also no need for existence of the consultants if mm. it is not for the uh, benefit of uh, organization and adjusting yeah. to what the organization yeah. needs. And it's not easy to say who you are when you do that. Exactly. exactly. We have a problem that, com that complex self-definitions, uh, professional self-definitions do not uh, give you an easy understandable label. Mm. So we we do a compromise. We call people systemic organizational development developer. And we write into the, the certificate what that means. But you need something you can become. Mm. Uh, if it's too abstract, people mm -hmm. don't buy it. So mm. We have to mm. find some compromise.